1995, a curious fellow by the name of Mike Markham attempted to build a time machine in the porchway of his home in Stanbury, Missouri. His invention consisted of a mysterious machine with inner workings he had concocted in his mind, all centered around an electrical Jacob's Ladder. His device used a modified compact disc laser, which reduced air resistance between the two poles, although it included an unusual arc when turning on the device. There was a heat anomaly created, appearing in a circular vortex-like form. After documenting this, he decided to throw a small metal screw at the anomaly to see the effect. He claims that he witnessed the object disappear for about a half a second, then reappeared a few meters away. With the help of donations, his next project was to make a larger, more powerful machine, one capable of allowing himself to attempt a plunge into the anomaly himself. While the original engine ran at a kilowatt, this machine was designed for 3 megawatts. Also, Markham installed a rotating magnetic field, similar to those used by the US military in the Philadelphia experiment. He believed that the rotating magnetic field was more effective and efficient. His undertakings predictably gained public notoriety, and he had appeared in the media discussing his invention and indeed intentions. Art Bell had Mike on twice. In the later interview, Markham claimed to be experimenting with a more sophisticated machine, going on to state that the electromagnetic vortex was now big enough for a man to walk into. Then, in 1997, he disappeared and was never seen again. Interestingly, people who have been fascinated by this story, its series of events, and Mike himself dug into death records and finds that could have been connected to him indeed traveling through time, specifically into the past. One in particular was a find made in the 1930s. A man was found on a Florida beach crushed to death and surrounded by a strange, futuristic-looking metal device. We find the entire series of events, Mike's disappearance, and indeed the machine itself, highly compelling. The Great Sphinx is among the Earth's greatest cultural mysteries. In the 1930s, self-styled prophet Edgar Cayce predicted that the secrets of the Sphinx would be revealed sometime in the 1990s, and Cayce, it turns out, may have been right. 10,500 BC, this is when the Sphinx is gazing directly at his own image, the constellation of Leo. And if we are to turn 90 degrees and face due south, we would see the three stars of Orion's belt in a pattern that mimics exactly the pattern of the pyramid on the ground. So we have here a perfect conjunction taking place only and only in 10,500 BC. But history books teach us that in 10,500 BC, our human ancestors were still in a primitive state, incapable of the advanced astronomical and engineering skills necessary to build great monuments. We're suggesting that the entire foundation on which our notion of human history rests is faulty. Ancient Egypt, the land of secrets, the land of kings. There are certain things in life that outweigh all others, burning questions regarding the most important aspects of all of us. To fully understand ourselves, I believe it is imperative that we strive to understand where we came from. This quest for the truth is the driving force behind mystery history. The answers to this question, where did we come from, I feel is more valuable than sovereignty, more valuable than wealth and power something that should not be concealed for any reason. Egypt is an amazing place, which opens its doors to many of its valuable treasures. However, the most amazing finds, the most amazing objects I have discovered, remain hidden. Hidden in vaults that may still be flooded with the sea waters that swallowed ancient Egypt. Rooms with treasures that if as old as the erosion of their protective sphinx, may be over 12,000 years of age, artifacts which possess great power, the power to rewrite human history. I'm Mark Lehner, and I'm here at the Great Sphinx of Giza. 
on behalf of Dr. Zahi Hawass, helping him out um, on drilling that we're doing underneath the Sphinx. In, in, in our first uh, hole here will be underneath the uh, Sphinx's uh, left paw. Perhaps the most visible example of an advanced civilization in Egyptian prehistory is that the Great Sphinx itself. Although the head was quite obviously recarved in dynastic times, the body and the man-made courtyard in which it sits show signs of heavy water weathering. We think that all the indications suggest that a time capsule was deliberately concealed at Giza in Egypt with the intention that it should be found one day, a time capsule that would abolish all ambiguity over this matter and make it absolutely certain of what had gone before and of what we have forgotten. But a time capsule that was not intended to be found by barbarians, that was hidden away very carefully to be found, as the ancient texts say, by the fully worthy. Perhaps that's who we are. Perhaps that time has come. Perhaps that's the decision and the awe-inspiring prospect that we confront in the near future. The right to open the chamber under the paws of the Sphinx is something of a political game these days. And the Egyptian government is holding all the cards. Only they know when and if the secrets of the Sphinx will be revealed to the world. Expeditions between 1991 and 1993, led by the independent Egyptologist John Anthony West, with Chief Geologist Dr. Robert Schock, Professor of Geology at Boston University, and Chief Seismologist Thomas Dobecki from a highly respected Houston consulting firm, conducted geological and seismic surveys around the Great Sphinx of Egypt. They concluded as follows, the pattern of erosion on the Sphinx indicates that it was carved at the end of the last ice age, when heavy rains fell in the eastern Sahara, more than 12,000 years ago. This contrasts starkly with the orthodox Egyptological dating for the Sphinx of around 4,500 years. The seismic survey indicated the existence of several unexplored tunnels and cavities in the bedrock beneath the Sphinx, including a large rectangular chamber at a depth of some 25 feet beneath the monument's front paws. In 1993, John West and his team were physically expelled from the site by Dr. Zahir Hawais, the Egyptian government's chief inspector of antiquities for the pyramids and Sphinx. He was angered by the suggestion that the Sphinx may be far older than the civilization of Egypt itself. A film created from the data linked the Sphinx to the lost city of Atlantis and suggested that the chamber beneath the pause might contain the legendary Hall of Records of Atlantis. American psychic Edgar Cayce, who died in 1947, prophesied this exact event occurring in the 90s. If his predictions were accurate, then whatever was discovered has been covered up. The Hall of Records is said to be an ancient library, rumored to have been deposited at the time of King Inhotep in Giza, Egypt though no one knows where. One suggestion has been that it was secreted away under the Great Sphinx of Giza, with a secret entrance to this layer, located near the Sphinx's paws. Dozens of academic researchers and historical commentators have come to similar conclusions, such as Manethu and Plutarch, it houses the knowledge of the pre-dynastic founders and latter Egyptians on papyrus, and allegedly several inscribed golden metal plate scrolls with the partial history of the lost civilization of Atlantis, much as the great library of Alexandria housed Grecian knowledge. The entirety of the ancient Egyptians' knowledge, the builders of the Great Sphinx, the pyramids etc., is said to be held within this place. You have to wonder, what could be contained within these documents that would lead to a huge concealment of this wonder? Does it prove our origins are extraterrestrial? Does it tell of us terraforming the Earth, while our home planet, died? Do these ancient passages contain a vimina? Or an alien craft? Does the library tell of us being visited? Without the world having access to these elusive tunnels beneath the Great Sphinx, all we can do for now is wonder.